Foreign Minister visits the African continent. Among the latest development across Africa is the uh, diplomatic visit which the new Chinese Foreign Minister Ching Gai has embarked to the continent uh, from, the sixth, uh, to the, uh, from the 9th to the 16th of January 2023, visiting countries like Ethiopia, Gabon, Angola, Benin, and Egypt. The Chinese uh, uh, official follows his pre predecessor, Wang Yi, who has over 30 years started each year with a trip to the African continent. A move spokesperson Wang Wabin underlines that it gives impetus or strengthens the traditional relationship that exists between China and Africa. Ching, 56 years old, was appointed for minister on the 30th of December 2022, it should be recalled that uh, uh, China stands as one of the major development and trade partners of uh, Africa. And of course, uh, the country looks forward to upholding the uh, friendship China is connected to Africa through Vision 2035 of China, the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the 2063 Agenda outlined uh, by the African Union, as well as uh, the national development strategies of African countries. Reports hold that China and uh, the African continent jointly formulated uh, this China-Africa cooperation uh, the vision 2035 to determine the directions and objectives of mid- and long-term cooperation and, of course, to promote a closer community with a shared future for China and Africa. However, today on the program Views on the Continent, we want to have a deeper understanding or a greater look uh, of uh, the uh, China's foreign minister's uh, visits to the African continent, asking how important and significant uh, this visit is to both the African continent and the People's Republic of China, and of course, to note that uh, this visit is coming at a time of uh, a heightened geopolitical tension. We also ask, uh, do you think uh, Africa can dislodge China in favor of the West? These are some of the questions we're going to answer in the course of the program, Views on the Continent. Thank you. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. What stakes as the new Chinese foreign minister visits the African continent? And do you think that Africa can dislodge China in favor of the West? What is the state of affair as far as the China-Africa relationship is concerned? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this day. It's another edition of the program Views on the Continent on the Pan-African Television. And today we are looking at the development across Africa, but focusing on the uh, uh, diplomatic uh, visit embarked by the new uh, Chinese uh, foreign minister in the person of Chingan, who uh, is visited uh, five African countries, uh, like we already heard in the introduction, the visits of course to five African countries, including Ethiopia, Gabon, Angola, Benin, and the North African nation of Egypt. But today we want to look at how beneficial this visit is to First of all, to the African continent and to the People's Republic of China, uh, noting uh, that uh, uh, the new uh, foreign minister of China is taking over from Wang Yi, who has always, of course, according to the report, uh, made uh, uh, his first uh, overseas uh, visit to the African uh, continent. And of course, is this a way uh, of bringing more impetus to the already mm. existing relationship between the African continent and the People's Republic of China? Uh, for 
cause is it another way uh, to, to strengthen uh, the relationship we had noticed that China is one of the biggest trading and even development partner of the African uh, continent what have you to say about this uh, recent uh, visit and of course what are the stakes involved uh, it's with pleasure that we'll be going out uh, to Cameroon's political capital Yaoundé we are going uh, to meet uh, Mr. Osad Muzuk Alphonse he's the coordinator of, of uh, Blessed Action for Africa and equally doubles as official ambassador of uh, Imbrit's uh, Forum Cameroon. He's joining us virtually this day. Hello to you, sir, and thanks for making it count this day. Hello, Clarice. I'm very happy to be your invitee today to discuss about the visit of the uh, Foreign Minister of China in Africa. I hope it will be another opportunity to edify Cameroonians, to edify Africans on what is going on now on the international scene between China and African countries. In data, it is very important when it comes to international relation. Uh, it is very important to understand of course and see how uh, this uh, uh, relation can be uh, something of a win-win a uh, mutual to see that both parties benefit from uh, the uh, existing relationship uh, between china and uh, the african continent uh, uh, just to remind our viewers that uh, we are live on facebook at Africa media tv you can follow us and of of uh, course, uh, leave your comments. What do you think uh, is the state of affair as far as the China-Africa relationship is concerned? And what can you make of uh, the first visit made by the new Chinese ambassador or the new Chinese foreign minister to the African continent, precisely visiting Ethiopia, Gabon, Benin, Egypt, uh, and of course, uh, Angola. Let's go uh, to, of course, having your first uh, impression about this uh, new uh, visit uh, by the, this visit, I beg your pardon, by the new Chinese uh, foreign minister, Mr. Fong. So what is your appraisal of this visit? Do you attach any specific importance to this uh, uh, visit as far as the African continent is concerned, especially in uh, the present state of affairs across the continent? Yes, Clarice, I attach a particular importance on the visit of the new Chinese foreign minister in the five African countries, which are Angola, Benin, Gabon, Egypt, and Ethiopia. Since three decades today, all the former Chinese foreign ministers, just after the appointment, used to visit Africa. This new foreign minister of China is walking in the same path of his predecessors. It shows that the nature of relationship that China and Africa have today, they are handling a good cooperation. And the kind of cooperation that China and African countries are developing today is a win-win cooperation which have benefits for all the sides. Africa wins, China wins. It is a kind of cooperation built also in friendship. The visit of the foreign minister of China in Africa also shows that Africa has a value in that cooperation. It means that the heart of China is in Africa because Chinese have many interests in Africa. Don't forget the fact that Africa today is, has many geopolitical stakes because we have many natural resources and all the superpower of the world are coming to Africa in order to negotiate to build sustainable corporations and how to seek, how to get new markets, how to be partners, how to invest through infrastructures in Africa and how to help many African countries to, to, to become developing countries. And China is 
one of the best African partners today. When we look at what is going on in many African countries, we can observe and we can see what China is doing concretely on the field through the buildings of many infrastructures in Central Africa, Eastern Africa, West Africa, and in other parts of Africa. China is a BRIC country. And BRIC countries have a philosophy. That philosophy is a win-win partnership. That win-win partnership means that there is no master and there is no slave. There is no one who is there to dictate the law and to bring other partners to obey. But their cooperation is built in solidarity and uh, in friendship, where everything is negotiated so that each part should win and each part should be satisfied in this cooperation. This is why China today is well appreciated in many African countries. But uh, uh, Mr. Alfonso, you, you said so many things which are, uh, uh, of course, imperative. And you said if China wins or if Africa wins, China wins. And of course, there is need to engage in a win-win uh, relationship. Of course, we've been having uh, different schools of thought about the China-Africa relationship. And of course, you equally mentioned about uh, the, the geopolitical stakes uh, which have gained momentum in present and the uh, Africa. Uh, let's come back. We are coming back to the, the, the visit before, of course, we are going to analyze the, the geopolitics and how it is affecting every uh, uh, sphere of the African continent. In your own perspective, uh, aside uh, uh, the, the, the things you've actually underlined, uh, what do you think at this particular moment is the current state of affairs uh, uh, regarding the, the relationship between uh, the People's Republic of China and the African continent as a whole, uh, as a whole. Yeah. When you observe, you observe uh, in many African countries today, you will come to realize that China is the main partner of development that is sponsoring and funding and financing many projects. What does it mean? It means that. African countries have come to realize that the cooperation they used to have with Europe, with European countries or American countries during 40 years, 50 years after our independence, that this kind of cooperation has not brought good results, has not improved the life of African countries. This is why today, China brought another philosophy. The philosophy of China is not to multiply seminars. The philosophy of China in Africa is not to multiply uh, China debates and everything, no, but is to materialize, is to implement this partnership through concrete action. You can find Chinese companies everywhere in Africa building roads. You can find Chinese companies in Africa everywhere building houses. You can find Chinese companies everywhere in Africa doing great achievements. And these kind of achievements are really appreciated by African leaders, appreciated also by African people. This is why in many African countries today, China, China is the country that is, is receiving different opportunities to invest, to bring his support to help African countries to get good infrastructure. And this is why China is more encouraged to, to, to invest in different countries with the visit of the new foreign the, the visit of the chinese foreign minister 
this is another opportunity for China, for example, to negotiate and to bring his soft power to Africa. When you look at the international scenes today in Africa, you will come to realize that European Union, the former partners of African countries, who was the, 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 <coughs> the major one, is losing many opportunities at the profit of, of China. Why? Because China has a different philosophy. Because Africans have come to realize that with China, it is a win-win partnership. And with this win-win partnership, many African leaders, be it municipalities, be it African companies, or be it African government, they prefer to deal or to have business with China today. Because with China, everyone at the end will be able to see with his naked eyes the concrete action. Everyone will be able to see the achievement. This is what we need today in Africa. The greatest challenge today in Africa is to improve the life of Africans. And what can be done to improve the life of Africans is to invest in many sectors in agriculture, to invest in agriculture, to turn our villages into many industries that will be able to create decent jobs for the youth and women, that will be able to process our raw material on our territories, on our countries, so that we should get uh, the technology, so that we should receive the know-how of China. This is one of the added value in the cooperation between China and African countries. We can see everywhere in Africa how China have their factories in Cameroon, they have their factories in Congo, they have their factories in other parts of Africa. It transfer technology to African countries. Our youth that are working in these factories learn and master the know-how of China. They master the technology, how it's worked, how it's used. This is the kind of partnership that we need today in, in Africa, in Africa. And I strongly believe that in years to come, the cooperation between China and African country will prosper, will prosper. This is what I believe. Course, uh, uh, it should be a win-win uh, relationship. Uh, 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 you you talked uh, about uh, the funding, uh, and of course, some people think uh, the funding is actually uh, very controversial. Uh, taking uh, uh, examples of how other parts have, have engaged in funding mm -hmm. activities or projects in Africa, and of course, the repercussions. So, what difference uh, does China make when it comes to to funding? Is isn't it controversial as funding may be brought about by uh, uh, the, the, all the parties and of course, what makes the difference? There is a difference. Yes. With our former partners, European countries and American countries, you see, when you African countries receive their fundings, they will tell you that you, you will give you 100 CFA to build a bridge in your country. But in that 100 CFA, all the tools and the material that will be used to build that bridge will come from that country. Now, all the technicians will come from that country. It means in that 100 that they will grant to you, the great part of that money will not move from their country to the African country. That will remain in their country. Even the cars that will be used to carry materials and to carry people for the project, everything will come from that country that gave you that 100, that 100 francs. And at the end, when the project is done, it will become, it will be no more an aid for development, but it will become a debt. And after many years, they will, tell, they will tell you that your country owes us 300,000 
because of the 100 that you receive for the bread. This kind of system is a system where Africa will never get developed. Because you receive something, you thought that it was an aid, that somebody was helping you, but at the end, it is that thing that becomes a debt. And because of that debt, they will come and exploit your raw materials for many years to try to compensate that debt. This is a system that maintains many African countries into a form of economic slavery so that we should always remain poor. What is the difference now with the, with the Chinese cooperation? With the Chinese cooperation, as I was saying, it is a win-win cooperation. You agree with China that we need a stadium. China say, yes, we will build you a, a stadium. If you have nothing to pay, give us one of your raw materials, give us some raw materials that can compensate the amount of money that we use to build you the, the stadium. If you have wood or if you have gold in the domain of mining, you will give them a quantity, a place, quantity of diamonds or gold that they can exploit to get back their money that they use for the stadium with a reasonable amount of benefit. It means you have the stadium and China finds a flexible way to compensate the money that he used to, to build the stadium for your country. And you will never be the slave of China. And at the end, China will not say that you have a debt that you owe him. This is the difference. It is better to deal with China and with other British countries in this base than continue dealing with our former partners. That gives you money, but at the end, you don't see the result of that money. Let's take the case of many African countries. You will hear that this financial institution gave this number of billions to these African countries. At the end, people don't see the achievement of that money. This is the problem. And this is what we want to change today in Africa. What kind of partners do we need today in Africa? We need the kind of partners who won't behave like a master, who won't behave like those that have the right, the only right to dictate what is forbidden and what is allowed. No. We want a partner before we can discuss as equal. We want a partner before we can develop business in with the philosophy of win-win. Everybody wins. We African countries, we win, and they too, they win. But if we continue with kind of partners which has as only goal just to cheat us, to exploit us, to use all our raw materials to enslave us and to maintain us in the state of poverty, this is not good. Many Africans have come to realize that this is not a good system, that some things need to be changed. And China and other British countries are good solutions today for good partnership that will lead African countries to reach their state of development. To see Africa a richer, uh, the top, and of course, uh, we also looking at uh, this uh, uh, relationship between China and Africa. You made mentioned already in your analysis that uh, China is a great uh, development partner uh, uh, to the continent Africa. Uh, in the, the contemporary society. I want us to continue in this perspective and highlighting uh, some of the problems faced by the African continent. Then we see how this partnership or the relationship 
with uh, China will help to uh, to be uh, or, or bring resolve to some of those problems. Uh, we know that, of course, uh, Africa has made strides uh, over the years as far as uh, uh, business is concerned, but today we still know that it's a problem for Africa to trade with itself, and uh, we also know how important it is if we want to uh, give a good uh, economic trajectory for the continent Africa, there is need to encourage intra-Africa trade. We talk about the challenges faced by Africa still as far as intra-Africa trade is uh, concerned. Uh, do you think uh, with, part, uh, with China as uh, a good partner, as you have underlined, it can help to, to boost and strengthen uh, those uh, 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 bridge the gap uh, between African countries and also uh, uh, foster the intra-Africa trade that happens, that has to happen huh, between the African countries, does it suffice only uh, trading with foreign parts, with foreign countries? What is the state of affairs as far as intra-Africa trade is concerned? And how does China come in to foster, uh, 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 or foster this trade between African nations? Um, no country can get developed without foreign investment. This is why today Africa is dealing with, with China. But what we have to underline here is that when China comes in Africa, it is for its own interest, it is to make profits and benefits for their companies and for their GDP and for their countries. We Africans, we need to use our wisdom and intelligence in order to find a way how to negotiate good partnership with Chinese companies so that we too should be the winners of this cooperation with China. Now, the intra-Africa trade which means trade between African countries. This is the best way Africans can build their integration. When we talk about integration, be it in the level of a sub-region or in the level of a whole region like whole Africa, this can be done by the movement of people and the movement of goods. And when I talk about the movement of goods between African nations or between African countries, this is intra-trade. For us to reach that level of intra-trade, we need to create sub-regional markets and regional markets in the level of whole Africa, where many people of different African countries can meet and exchange their goods or sales they are sell and buy goods. This is the best strategy for the development of Africa. This is the best strategy to boost the economy of Africa. Our leaders, our political leaders, have to work hard to bring that dream to come true. Intra-trade in Africa had many benefits. This benefit, is one of the benefits is to unite Africa through market, which is exchange of goods and the fact of buying and selling goods. Many Africans of different countries will come together, will discuss together, will build corporations, will build business partnership, they will develop business contacts, and this will bring people from different parts of Africa to become one. And this will strengthen African unity. Africa has to unite. It is the ultimate solution for us to be strong in this global world. If Africa unites through that integration, through intra-trade between African countries, 
we will now be we will now be will be able we now will be able to fix the price of our raw material we will be able now to say for our cocoa or for our coffee this is what we want if somebody want to buy our coffee or our cocoa in africa whatever the country one kilo of coffee will cost this one kilo of gold in africa will cost this it is the only and the ultimate solution to stop that unique phenomenon that does that you produce your cocoa in your kaduma or in another part of africa but the price of your cocoa or the price of your coffee is fixed in london no it's not for the interest of african we need that intra trade between african countries we need to multiply the number of sub-regional markets in africa and we need also to create a regional market in africa where people from south africa from morocco from tunisia from ethiopia from uganda from Somali, from Mogadishu, can meet to sell and buy their goods. Africans will feel one people. It will unite Africans. We need it. Through that intra trade between African countries, we will be achieving the dreams of united africa if we have that unity as far as economic domain is concerned africa will become strong strong in the international scene africa now will speak like one man in the international scene to fix the price of his raw material to fix the price of his natural resources This is the ultimate chance of Africa to become strong. To become strong is to develop that intra trade market in Africa through sub regional market and regional market. Okay, uh, okay. which is uh, very uh, important uh, to uh, bring in development uh, because at, at the end, uh, the, the goal is to see that Africa is uh, uh, developed and, uh, of course, uh, the economies. Uh, uh, thrive well in uh, the present context. We, we, we continue to look at uh, this. You have highlighted uh, the, the, the so many things uh, well, what uh, African countries can do, especially uh, as far as the political leaders are concerned. I want us to look at this uh, uh, the, 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 this uh, wind of change, of course, that is blowing across Africa. And we are also aware that countries, uh, the West and other countries are trying to carve their sphere of influence in Africa. I can say yeah, there's the, the, this modern day mud rush for the mm -hmm. continent of Africa. Uh, do you think that this can in any way uh, derail the, uh, the, the continent for, towards its development agendas? Or can we say uh, is uh, uh, the, the, the scramble for Africa, which of course seems uh, imminent according to some uh, of, uh, pundits. So what can Africa do uh, amidst all of this happening across con the continent to take advantage of everything that is happening? We see the interests, small countries are, uh, are seduced every day by the African continent. Now, knowing your potential, what can Africa do, especially the political leaders, to take advantage of everything that is occurring at this particular moment, of course, to work in our favor? There is a wind, there is a wind of change blowing in Africa. Mm -hmm. There is a wind of change blowing in each African country. Why? Because Africa today is a state of geopolitics. Why? Because Africa is the richest country of the world. This is the first thing I want Africans that are listening to me 
to return tonight. Africa is the richest country of the world. Africa has the 60% of natural resources of the world. Because we have that riches, because we have that potential, because we have those natural resources, all the civilized countries, all the powers and the surplus powers of the world are now coming in Africa. With the return of Russia in Africa, we can see the tsunami that it has created in the international scene with China getting and winning more and more many markets in many African countries. We can see how European Union today is coming back with another philosophy to speak to the heart of African leaders. We can see how even the United States of America now also have decided to organize a summit between Africa and the United States. Why? It's because something is going on in Africa. It's because the eyes of the world world that got opened that Africa is the richest country of the world. He who has a partnership and a cooperation with Africa becomes strong. Why? Because he gets in Africa what makes him strong. This is why all these powers are fighting seriously for their interest in Africa. The return of Russia, European Union and their 27 countries, American countries and China with other British countries are, are there. Africa is now a battle warfare, an economic battle warfare, where all those superpowers want to get space, where they will develop their economic politics, where they will sell their goods, where they will uh, sell their goods, where they will buy raw materials. We Africans, we need wisdom. We Africans, we need intelligent strategies that will theorize good strategies that will enable us to collect benefits from all those partners. I've been discussing with many African leaders. Many tell me, no, we won't deal with this country because our partner is this, no, this is not wisdom. The fact the war of our former partners or our international partners is not our war. We Africa should become wise. What we have to do is to develop a strategy that will help us to find the way that will lead us to the accomplishment, to the achievement of our destiny. And what is that way? We need to develop strategic partnerships with strategic partners that will help us to develop Africa, to improve the life of our communities, to improve the life of Africans in villages, in towns, in our quarters, we need to develop strategic partnership with partners that will help us to build infrastructure everywhere in Africa. Energetic infrastructures to build roads, buildings, hospitals, schools, everything that is good for a country to better the life or to improve the life of its people. To say no, we don't want China, we want France, we don't want France, we want England, is not our role as Africans. If France and European countries make up their mind and they, good, they bring good, good proposal, we are not supposed to refuse. If United States say, I also organize Africa summit between Africa and United States of America. Now, 
I won't use my hard power to impose on my view of the world or to impose on my vision, but I will use my soft power to speak to your heart. Now, I will be flexible with you. I have these fundings for you. We are not supposed to refuse. If China say, I, China, I want to boost the development of Africa, we are not supposed to refuse. If Russia say, I, Russia, I want to help you in this domain with technology, we don't have to refuse. If India, Brazil, and other countries of BRICS says, we can give this to you to improve the life of your people or to develop your country, we are not supposed to refuse. Let's go out of the war of these developed countries. It is not our war. We African. Our only interest is to fight for the improvement of our living condition. The only thing we are supposed to do is to fight seriously while signing partnership agreement. Many African countries always sign both partnership agreement just for the benefits of the international partners, not for the benefits for Africans. This has to change. This is why we are working hard to stop such things. African leaders must be patriots. They must love their countries. They must love their people. They must work hard for the interests of their communities. They must work hard to foster development in agriculture, foster development in industry, through industry, through industrialization, foster development through funding in entrepreneurship. They must foster development by building infrastructures, by building roads, by building giant infrastructures of renewable energies everywhere in Africa. We need energy. We need roads. We need buildings. We need houses. We need schools. We need hospitals. Who is a good leader? A good leader is the person who says, what can we do with our raw materials to mobilize international investors to come and invest in our country. What should I do with my government to mobilize fundings abroad and come and implement concrete projects in my country? What must I do to improve the life of my people? This is a leader according to God's heart. And we need such leaders today. We need such charismatic leaders that love their countries. We need some pragmatic leaders that work for the interests of their people. We need them. Thank you. I pray God the winds of good leaders blow in Africa. Indeed, we Africa need... Africa will change and change will happen. In co uh, of course, uh, the change is already uh, uh, very visible, and of course, uh, we need leaders that will put the interest of Africans first. And now, just to align with what you just said, uh, the African Union Commission chairperson uh, some years ago, uh, in the person of uh, Musa Faki Muhammad, underlined uh, that Africa is already aware of everything that is happening uh, across the continent, uh, pointing geopolitics politics, geoeconomics, and other uh, uh, events unfolding across the African continent. But like you said, there is need for African leaders, the stakeholders, to work with wisdom and in wisdom to make sure that Africa can position itself and stand categorically when uh, 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 it comes to, to engagement at, at the international level. And of course, uh, we continue, Ms. Alphonse, to talk oh, what is uh, actually making headline news today. We are looking at this foreign, uh, uh, the visit of the new foreign minister of China and of course, looking China-Africa relationship just to 
remind those of you joining us right now that this is the program Views on the Continent on your Pan-African television. It is informative, it is educative, and of course interactive. You can drop your comments on our Facebook page, Africa Media uh, TV. What do you think are the stakes involved? What do you think African countries can do at this particular moment, especially at a time where there is a mad rush for the cont continent Africa? How can we avert the, the, the negative consequences, of course, and of course, make good use of the advantages to fast track development in every sector in Africa? And that is where uh, we focus on today's edition of the program. We continue with you, Mr. Alphonse, to know that the, the visit by the uh, new Chinese foreign minister is coming at a moment where we see uh, a moment of Western influence uh, in the global economic order and, and others uh, as you already outlined. So how can China, uh, uh, being a member of, uh, of, of BRICS, uh, enhance this, uh, its economic, uh, I beg your pardon, its economic and as well diplomatic uh, collaboration with the African continent to ensure that the continent mitigates uh, the uh, uh, negative effect uh, uh, that will come as a result of this economic downturn in, in Africa. We, we know, of course, what is happening uh, at the international level has actually affected many countries in Africa presently. So with this cooperation, how can the two uh, 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 partners work together to mitigate the economic effects of, of the happenings around the world? Oh yes, the, how to mitigate the effects of economic crisis around the world in Africa, it, is, it depends. Everything starts with negotiation. The first mistake that Africans are supposed to avoid today mm -hmm. with China and with other BRIC countries during negotiations of cooperation agreement is to send people that do not love their countries. When people that love their countries negotiate with bilateral or multilateral partners, they will make sure that in the cooperation agreement, all the articles and the substance of this cooperation agreement be good for all the part, for all the parties. Everything starts there during the negotiation. Everything starts start there during the negotiation. China is one of the giants economically speaking today in the world, or if you want, the economic power of the world today. China has financial means, but we African countries, we have the raw materials. We have natural resources. And even the human resources. And human resources. Indeed. The first thing that we have to do as strategies is to build the balance of power. We know that without our natural resources, China, with its fundings, won't do anything, won't go forward, won't get developed. Without our natural resources, its industries won't function. At all costs, they need our natural resources. With this, we have to build a balance of power. It's not because they have fundings in billions of dollars that our representative that will go and sign partnership agreement with them should be trembling, unable to defend the interests of their country or the interests of Africa. No. It is a win-win partnership. You have money, and I have what you want. I have natural resources. We must be able to discuss as equal. This is the first thing as Pan-Africanists. 
This is the first thing to be done as patriot. This is the first thing to be done as somebody that loves his country, as somebody that loves his continent. If all the cooperation agreements or all the partnership agreements are well negotiated, it means we will have enough to improve the life of our people and to mitigate the effect of economic crisis in Africa. This is the first thing. Now, the second thing to be done is that when we sign a partnership agreement, the funding that we receive should be invested in the project for which this funding was mobilized. This is the sins of many African countries. If you mobilize 100 for the project of road construction, this 100 will not be affected in this project of road construction. Just only 20 francs will be affected there. And at the end, the project will fail. We will have the debt, the investors will take our raw materials and no achievement. These are things that multiply the effect of economic crisis in Africa. With the money, with the fundings that we received from investors, from our bilateral and multilateral partners, if we invest in concrete projects of development, if we create industries, if we process or transform our raw materials, this will create wealth. It will create prosperity all over Africa. It will create prosperity in our community, in our division, in our subdivision, in our municipalities, in our towns and cities. You will be able to get decent jobs. Economic activities will be created and multiplied everywhere. And nobody won't feel the effects of economic crisis in Africa. This is another best method to mitigate the effect of economic crisis in Africa. Yes. Our leaders must be responsible in what they are doing. Not only our leaders, whoever has a small piece of responsibilities in the management of a project must do it according to the rule of art. This is what we need in Africa. Let's multiply and let's implement projects. And ensure if different projects in Africa will receive fundings abroad from bilateral and multilateral partners, if this project were implemented, Poverty would have decreased in Africa. Poverty would have decreased in many African countries. Poverty would have decreased in many African societies and communities. With BRICS countries like China, like Russia, like Brazil, like South Africa or India, I invite African leaders to use the fundings that they receive for projects with the sense of high responsibility. This will help to reach great achievement by building road infrastructures, energetic infrastructures, infrastructures in all the domains of life in Africa. Indeed. That will lead prosperity, and that will create wealth right. all over Africa. Mm -hmm. And if this wealth and prosperity is shared in a national scale, nobody will be poor. <laughs> nobody will be jobless. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And, and, and there is enough raw material. There is enough raw, uh, natural resources in Africa to improve the lives of all Africans. Absolutely. African is not, we are not poor country, no. No, no, no. African countries are the richest countries of the world. This must be known. But the management 
of fundings that come from our raw materials is where there is sin. If this is well managed, everything will be all right for everybody. Indeed, uh, there is need for responsible leadership. And of course, uh, if aspect like uh, uh, you talked about implementing projects, if we implement and also ensure the sustainability of this project, I think it will go a long way uh, to uh, uh, lift Africa out of poverty or Africans out of poverty, like you underlined. Africa is not a poor continent. Africa is rich, no. both natural and human capital. How can we then harness these potentials, especially uh, the, uh, the skills, uh, human capital, which is imperative in building the continent Africa that we need? How can we therefore harness these skills? This is another uh, issue on its own that we need, of course, to, to understand it uh, uh, deeply to see how we can uh, harness the, the, the skills, the human capital, of course, use it towards the development of the continent, Africa. And of course, you also underline something which I want to reiterate. And of course, let's look at sustainability, the aspect of accountability, the aspect of transparency, and of course, mitigating, of course, corruption to ensure, like you've said, when money is disbursed, it should be channeled to the right project and of course done perfectly well, which will take me to uh, one question, uh, which I was about to ask, uh, regarding this money, according to the vision uh, uh, 2035 on the lines by China and Africa, uh, the People's Republic of China has to uh, or will invest a sum of 60 billion US dollars in Africa by the year 2035. And of course, this is to support the economies of African uh, countries, highlighting sectors like agriculture, uh, uh, manufacturing, infrastructure, environmental protection, and uh, digital economy, blue economy, and you can name the rest. These are sectors which are very much important, and if uh, well harnessed, will create wealth, mm. and of course, mm. leave or increase the living standards of Africans. So how can African stakeholders prepare themselves towards uh, uh, getting this money, 60 billion US dollars, to invest in this very uh, uh, named uh, or highlighted sectors? How ready are uh, 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 African governments to uh, uh, fast track this change in the sectors highlighted, especially digital economy, agriculture, and blue economy, uh, uh, and you can name the rest. What we have to do is, is, is just simple. Mm -hmm. In all African countries, we have all kinds of expertise. We have everything. We have the skills. We have the abilities. We have the capabilities. Mm -hmm. We have the knowledge. We have the know-how. What are we supposed to do to well manage the 60 billions that African countries will receive from China until 2035? Mm -hmm. We need to elaborate projects, development projects. This is the only solution. We need development projects. Each leaders. Each government of each African country must have a dream. They must have a vision. They must have a burden in their heart. When you are seated in the throne with your collaborators, members of government, as the president of the republic, you must have a vision, you must have a dream that you share with your collaborators. And your collaborators that are ministers are there to materialize and to implement that dream, that vision that came from the burden that God placed in your heart to improve the life of the people of your country and to remove your country from poverty, to remove your country from lack and shame. Which is in the 
sector of agriculture, a president must have a dream. What must I do to turn <laughs> agriculture into the master key that will enable me to create wealth in my country? What must I do to turn agriculture the sector that can change everything in my country? When you call their, your expert, you share your dream with them in agriculture, they will elaborate projects, agricultural projects, with the component of transformation or processing or manufacturing that will write bankable projects that will help you to mobilize fundings abroad from bilateral and multilateral partners in order to multiply agricultural projects all over your countries so that all the youth and women and people of different villages of your country should be working there, earn their life there, and what at the same time that they will be producing goods, processing it, and creating wealth. In the domain of <coughs> infrastructure, we need projects. We need like rural electrification in all the African countries. We need it. We have the sun in Africa. We have the wind in Africa. We have rivers in Africa. What do we need? We need renewable energy with renewable energy. And with the light of sun, with wind, the winds that we have in Africa, with rivers, the water of rivers that we have in Africa, we can create renewable energy everywhere. Transform it into electricity and sell electricity everywhere. And create companies that will sell electricity <laughs> in many municipalities and villages. This is possible. We need houses in many of our towns. There are lack of houses that people can rent. We need to create thousands of thousands of thousands of buildings and houses in our countries, in our cities, in our towns that can generate monies where people, civil servants and strangers will rent and it will generate money each month. Our state and the government have to do it and they have to elaborate projects in that sense. Okay. We have raw materials. We, two Africans, must exploit our raw materials. Do you find normal clarity that we have uh, petrol, kerosene, and everything, oil? We have oil. But we consume the oil that comes from Europe, which is refined in Europe, and oil is very expensive in Africa. When this oil is exploited in Africa, we need raffineries that can transform this oil into kerosene, petrol, oil, and everything. We too can run this kind of project. We too can have our own industries that process oil, that transform oils for the goods of Africans so that it should become cheaper in Africa. In, indeed, uh, Mr. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry to cut you short, but then we have just a few minutes to be together. But let's let's end uh, with this last question. We are talking about transforming Africa. We are talking about seeing the economies of African nations being buoyant. So we are going to end uh, with this. We know that there's this historic free trade area, historic project. I always want to talk about it because I see it as something that will go a long way and it's, it has started, of course, transforming the economies of African countries. So with this partnership that African nations, which you have highlighted, there is need for cooperation 
and there is need uh, to, to endorse anybody with good intentions. So now yeah. we're looking at the, 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 China, the Chinese coming to, uh, already present in Africa and uh, we, we see the project. So we, we also know that uh, the, there's the continent of free trade area and some countries, we're talking Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, uh, uh, Rwanda, and you can name the race. I've even started trading under the uh, African continent of free trade area. And we know the huge markets that this uh, uh, continent of free trade area presents. So with a partner like China and, uh, and maybe other BRICS country, how can this, they help with their expertise, with their know-how, how can they actually help the African continent or African countries uh, fast track this trade under the African continent uh, free trade area? It is very simple. China and other British countries can help African countries by supplying machines. We need machines. We need technology. Why do we need machines and technology? to produce, we need to increase our production. If we increase our production, we will have enough clarity to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. We will have enough to sell to our neighbors and we will have enough to sell to our bilateral and multilateral partners. We need technology. We cannot achieve it without technology. We need machinery. We need machines that will help us to increase our production. And China, Russia, India, Brazil, and South Africa are ready to accompany African countries by transferring technologies. This is why British countries today are a great chance and opportunity for African countries. Okay, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Alphonse. Thank you for the great insight on this topic, which was, of course, on the visit of uh, the new China uh, Chinese uh, foreign minister to the African continent, and, of course, which looked uh, holistically about the, the relationship or the state of affairs as far as the China-Africa partnership is concerned while inculcating other partners. How can Africa, of course, trade uh, with these partners, international trade, ensuring a strong international cooperation that will boost development across the African continent? And that is what we discussed this year on the program Views on the Continent. Uh, we want to thank you, Mr. Uh, Alfonso Otsamuzoka, uh, reiterating that you are the coordinator of Bless Action for Africa, and also you double as the official ambassador of Imbrics uh, Plus Forum Cameroon. Thank you so much, sir, for the great insight. Thanks. And of course, to our viewers out there, thank you for always trusting the Pan-African television. We can go also, we can't go without acknowledging uh, the technical crew for having uh, uh, ensured a smooth run of the program. Thank you. And of course, have a beautiful moment in the company of our transmissions. I'll see you some other time. Bye-bye for now. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.